a strong fight. Waking my people up, this gon' be a long night. Because they whole life, my people been lied to. They gave you false religion just to try to blind you. Now we, now we, now we, now we, they got us crying on them shits and we singing like, now we, now we, now we, now we, we getting slayed in America, we die like, now we. Shalom, I just had a question about, about tapering off of what you just talked about, suicide. So, mm -hmm. what is suicide? Like, what, what happens? Like, you know, how do you address that? And maybe for Israelites, like these people that were in the truth and they committed to, like, what happens then? Uh, go back to the commandments here. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Oh, for, oh, these prophets up here, let me start flipping pages. <laughs> so we like it. All right, read the, the, the first, uh, I think it's verse 13, Exodus 20. Yeah. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Read it again. Thou shalt not kill. Not even your own self is the commandment from the Most High. Thou shalt not kill. For the, for the reason, what did that was with Solomon? Yeah, good. So, bring it out. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Seek not death in the error of your life. But if you say you want to bring it up? Yeah, bring it up. Right, read it, read it, read it, read it. Wisdom of Solomon, 1 and 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Seek not death in the error of your life. Come on. And, put, and pour not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. So that's going into killing yourself. Pour not with the... Uh, put not upon yourself destruction. It could be uh, a gun, a rope, a pills, slicing of the wrist, all that. With the works of your hands. Hold that. Get uh, Surah 14 11. Surah 14 11. Seek not death. Pour not upon yourself destruction with the works of your hands. Read that. Surah chapter 14 and verse 11. Come on. My son, according to thy ability, uh -huh. do good to thyself. So that's a commandment. God says we must do good to ourselves. Killing ourselves is not doing good to ourselves. You understand? We don't. And give the Lord his due offering. So, we ain't supposed to be trying to kill ourselves. That's the commandment. Here we go. Give me, uh, please, yes, these in the Bible, uh, 7 and 17. We're dealing with suicide. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 17. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? So why would you die before the time that God ordained? Uh, watch this, the reason why. Matthew 10 and 29. Matthew 10 and 29. Okay. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farting? Come on. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Uh -huh. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. You see that you are more value, even of uh, more value than animals on the, on the planet. So you got to make sure you take that into consideration. All right, every hair on your head is being counted, is numbered. So for you to go ahead and bring death and destruction upon yourself before the time appointed, that's wickedness. All right. <coughs> All right. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Get Ecclesiasticus chapter 1, verse 23. Sirach chapter 1 and verse 23. Read. A patient man uh -huh. will bear for a time. Because you're going to go through what you go through. We all go through things, right? Read on. And afterward, joy shall spring up unto him. Now jump down to chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter Sarah, 2, verse 1. Chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, the patient man will bear for a time. Right? For the time that it takes you to go through and think about committing suicide, if you were to reach out to your brothers, especially in this truth, if you were to reach out to brothers, to, counsel, to your counselors, which is leadership, your own brothers, your own sisters, before you take that next step, right, to taking your own life, before even understanding that the, the scriptures say, thou shalt not kill. So why kill yourself? Because you've made an error in your life. Read what you got. My son, 
If thou come to serve the Lord, uh -huh. prepare thy soul for temptation. Because there's going to be temptations that's going to cause you to think, you know what? I can't, I can't go any further because I've made mistakes. So I have to end it all right now. But the most I read it again. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, so if you come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Prepare, prepare thy soul for temptation. So, so you have to prepare yourself for the temptations that are gonna come to you, each and every one of us in this room, and each and every one of us that want to turn ourselves, turn our lives back to the most high. We have to prepare ourselves for those temptations. Read on. Verse 2. Uh -huh. Set thy heart aright. So that's that's us. Taking heed to the commandment. Taking our, putting our minds and getting it right is taking heed to the commandment. Taking heed to the counsel that you will get from brothers and leadership. Right? Watching the videos. Uh, applying the laws that you learn. Read on. And constantly endure. And do what? Constantly endure. Read on. And make not haste in time of trouble. That goes again into pulling down destruction on yourself. Do not take What's, what's happening to you as something that is unique to you and nobody else that you will bring down and destroy yourself because of the fact that you're going through something that you maybe haven't gone through before. It says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 that go the to most, it. let's go to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Read. They have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. So there's no temptation that falls upon us that is unique to any one of us. Every one of us here has to go through something in this in this walk, in this life. Read on. But God is faithful. God is what? Faithful. That what? Read on. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above. That ye are able. So he will give you something in your life, as a, whether it be an obstacle or a trial in your life, that is overwhelming. That will cause you to bring death upon yourself. But he will do what? Read. But with that temptation. But with the temptation. Read. Also make a way to escape. So he will give you something that will allow you to constantly endure. That's that. Re reaching out to leadership, reaching out to your sisters, reaching out to your brothers to go over the scriptures that will cause you to give healing, get the healing that you need hey, from those temptations. You know what the scriptures say? He is faithful. Yeah. I mean, he got your back. He got you. Right. right. He got you. He got you. Uh, precept for how he makes a way to escape that temptation, those thoughts of strangling yourself coming to mind. Please ask these four. Uh, three, verse, verse nine through twelve. Yeah. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Two are better than one uh -huh. because they have a good reward for their labor. So that's the way he gives you a way to escape the temptation. Two are better than one because one by yourself, your own thoughts will bring you to ruin. You'll think the whole there's no hope, there's no end to where I'm at. Uh, I might as well just take my life and be done away with this. But if you got somebody there with you, two are better than one. For what reason? Verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So if you fall, you know, them thoughts get low in your own mind. You start looking up, whoa, it's me, everything around. But you forget and you do got life. You do got another day. You do got some time to change things. It might not be a physical condition, might not be money at this, but the one thing that you can do is this. 1 Samuel 30 and 6. This is the thing you can do. And that fellow that's with you, that's why it goes in so, so heavy about choosing a friend. Those around you. Because some people cannot give you the right advice, the right words that you need to hear at that time to do this. First Samuel 30 and 6. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. He was what? Distressed. He was going through it in his mind. Everything around him was crumbling. His, one of his sons had raped his daughter. And then one of the other sons had killed all the other kids. Read on. For the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. 
every man for his son and for his daughters. Mm -hmm. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. What, what did David do? But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Thank you, Lord, for what I got a day. I'm breathing. I can walk. I open my eyes this morning. It's another day to serve you. Give me that in Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 14. I was a derision to all my people and their song all the day. He had filled me with bitterness. He had made me drunken with wormwood. He had also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He had covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I have forgot prosperity. I forgot, pro I forgot all the good that the Lord had done for me. I'm only thinking about this one single moment in time. I don't remember. He allowed me to see these 30, 40, 50 plus years of my life. He fed me every day. Some days I might have been hungry, but I'm still here. He made a way. We don't. Verse 18. Verse 18. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. This is somebody that doesn't let their thoughts get the best of them. Read on. Remembering my affliction and my misery. What was they thinking about? Remembering my affliction and my misery. They was thinking about all the bad stuff. Depressed. Depressed is what it is. Read on. The wormwood and the gall. My soul have them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Mm -hmm. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It's the Lord what? Mercies that we are not consumed. Mm -hmm. Because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Uh -huh. The Lord is my portion. Save my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. These are some powerful words right here. That's why in James it says, um, uh, Receive the engrafted word of God, that you may be able to save your souls. Let this thing get down in your spirit and resonate in you. And start thinking to yourself, All of the uh, compassions that have not failed, they are new every morning. I got breath in my body. Uh, the Lord is my portion. Read verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. My faith will be in the Lord. Read on. Verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. That do what? That wait for him. It takes faith to wait on the Lord and not in your life before the time. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Read on. To the soul that seeketh him. Uh -huh. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. That's what you got to wait for. That takes faith to go through all the temptations and the things that you might be going through. Your thoughts getting the best of you. And you might think about, I want to take my life. But you don't know the time that God has for you. Every single day those mercies are renewed. You got to think on those things. And it also says in Sirach, if one of your brothers can find that. Last scripture here. Uh, 11 and 25. Sirach. Okay. Chapter 11 and verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a for, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. So we get some money and we always forget what we've been through. And that's why we spend all our daggone money up and ain't got nothing to show for it. Read on. And in the day of affliction, there is no remembrance of prosperity. So you, you forget. You forget what the Lord has done for you. You forget all the mercies that he's given you every single day of your life. And you start to harp on that stuff. Woe is me, and it can lead you to the point of taking your own life. But like we read in Tobit, this sister, she prayed unto the Lord, take this reproach. She encouraged herself in the Lord. And what happened? When she awoke every single day, the Most High brought that man that was ordained for her from the beginning to her and they brought forth kids and she lived the rest of her life in joyfulness. So, going into suicide, that's some precepts for you. A bunch more, but carry yourself in the Lord. Don't let your thoughts weigh you down.
Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.